How many of you know people that have been injured or have died because of gang violence who are your age or like, you know, who are kids? This happened like a few weeks ago. What happened? They ran up to him, shot him seven times in the back, shot his homie in the leg, and then shot him in the head. It is a normal day. It's like everyday life. And I know that's sad, but after a while, you just get used to it. So you were seven years old when yeah, you were I shot? Was seven. You just got to be like, dang, that's sad. You can't be like, wow, wow, wow. Like, it's too many wows. Two weeks ago, we had a, a, about six shootings in one day. I mean, it was all starting at 10 o'clock in the morning. I mean, you see, you hearing somebody take their last breath? That's a sound that never leaves you. I just want a community to look like when people forget about it. This is how it became Death Alley. We're in South Central LA in an area that's been called Death Alley by the community because in the past seven years there have been over a hundred homicides in this neighborhood alone. People are being affected by the violence in this area in a very serious way. Most people associate post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, with American troops returning home from war. But when you look at communities like this, they're suffering from the same thing. Experts say it's an epidemic and that up to 40% of urban poor in America are dealing with PTSD. South Central South Vermont Avenue. It's the blood-soaked battlefield for at least six gangs that claim the area as their own. It's called Death Alley because it has one of the highest homicide rates in Los Angeles. And smack in the middle of it is Soledad Enrichment Action, or SEA. And you're here the metal detector. A charter high school serving the neighborhood's high-risk kids. This community that we're in is very rough. Uh, a lot of shootings, a lot of stabbings, a lot of drugs. Um, it's very disenfranchised. Eric Jones is a counselor here. His job is to help identify and connect with students who are suffering from a variety of problems, including PTSD. Let me give you a quick example. Okay. Uh, say you're at a party and a balloon pops, people duck. They duck because they're used to hearing gunshots. And to me, my personal experience about that is post-traumatic stress disorder. He's also a former gang member so he's able to relate to a lot of what they're going through. What we're curious about is the kind of violence that you see and you come from. So my first question to everyone, you know, you, could, you guys could just raise your hands, is how many of you have known someone that's been involved in a shooting? You're not gonna go to jail, you're all right. <laughs> okay. And how many people have seen someone get shot? Wow. Up close? My mom's brother was affiliated with gang members. He wasn't a gang member. And he was walking down the street with my dad's brother, and he got shot in the back with a shotgun. I was like with my brother, who was like five or six. I don't know, we used to go to the park all the time. And it was just these gang bangers that came and then like they just started shooting and the dude was sitting right there and then it was like we was all standing right there like we was trying to run and then the dude just shot the um, other boy. He was like probably like 15, he shot him in the back of the head, he was just laid out right there and then we just all ran. Like, Do you ever have nightmares or think about that? I can still see it sometimes. That's pretty traumatic. You know, you standing next to somebody and they just get hit like that. Is anybody still affected by that? Or are you guys just kind of numb to that? Like, you know what, it, it happens. Okay, I'm glad it didn't happen to me. I don't know, I could be wrong, but it seemed like you guys not that traumatic to you. Like, it's not really affecting me or it's like it's something I'm just keeping it, I'm keeping it out of my mind so it won't mess me up. It's like everyday life. That's the type of environment we're in. I still think it's wrong. Like, at the end of the day, we're gonna feel it because we're human. But after a while, it's just getting like, Another person died, like it's regular. It's like you adapt. 
Our students have witnessed um, boys and girls like three and four and five years old being killed right in front of them, right on their streets. Father Stan Bosch is a Catholic priest, psychotherapist, and director of SEA's gang intervention program. Come on, boy. And he says many of his students show the classic symptoms of PTSD. Numbness, sleeplessness, traumatic flashbacks, and a constant feeling of anxiety. The adrenaline that's flowing, the cortisol that's flowing, the fight, flight, or freeze kind of reactions from our reptilian brain are operative all day long, really. And you see it in our classrooms, you see it out on the basketball court, you see it on the street. Someone looks at these kids and they're like, oh, they're angry, or they're violent, or they're, they're not interested in learning. Do you feel that some of the issues that these kids are accused of are, in fact, related to or are PTSD? I believe that, that those kinds of characteristics are the symptoms of something deeper, of a deeper pain or wound. Why is somebody restless in a classroom and can't concentrate? There's all sorts of dynamics that are happening neurologically with that student or that youth. There's all sorts of things happening um, in the emotional state of one's body. The incapacity to find words for what I'm feeling inside has people reacting in violent ways. Research by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention found more inner-city children suffer from PTSD than soldiers returning from war. And in communities with high rates of sufferers, it can become a serious public health issue. People are on edge, and one accidental bump, one wrong look, the color of the t-shirt you wear, can spark a new wave of violence. We left Saya guided by Kevin Twin Orange. He's also a former gang member now working to prevent violence. Me and my team, we stand out here and try to watch the temperature. Right now, he's making sure students make it out of school and away from Death Alley safely. When these kids step outside of school, what are the risks they're taking? But first, of them getting killed and them getting robbed. Them two right there. You know, normally it would be droves of people just hanging out when they get out of school. So now we make them leave. So they want to stand on the corners and be targets for somebody to come through and shoot them. As a member of the Hoover's gang, Twin managed to survive the bad old days of LA's gang wars in the 1980s and 90s. But after being shot eight times in 2006, he dedicated his life to ending the cycle of gang violence that continues even today. But to do that, he's had to come to terms with his own psychological wounds. I've seen everything, you know what I mean? I done seen my best friends die in front of me. You know, I don't see people get killed, people hurt, beat, I don't seen it all. You know, so there's nothing I, I didn't see. I seen it all. And how did that affect you, like? It made me numb, it made me numb to everything, you know what I mean? It made me numb to everything, to where I was like, this was the norm. And you don't know no better, you know? You think it's normal. And that's how some of the kids get involved with, they think it's normal, but it's not. We was the one making things the way they were. So we was writing a book along with their lifestyle, so we didn't know. But now we know where we can go back and tell them what they're doing is wrong and why it's wrong, but we didn't want to put it like that. Could you describe some of the symptoms of the violence that you've seen, what people would probably call PTSD? I mean, you see, you hearing somebody take their last breath? That's a sound that never leave you. I mean, that, no, that sound, the first time I heard it, I, it's just like I heard it yesterday. Because this is a sound you never forget. Most afternoons, Twin drives around Death Alley and surrounding neighborhoods, sniffing out and diffusing gang tensions. Today, the streets are empty. A spate of shootings the week before has kept everyone inside. And as you can see, there's not no kids hanging out on the streets. They getting where they have to go, because I guess these last shootings that occurred, they kind of like stayed on their mind, like, man, I don't want to die today. Tell me a little bit about the behavior or the attitude of kids who've seen shootings or who've seen violence. People, they're so used to the shootings, and ambulance, helicopters, and, and just candles on every corner, you know? They think that's the norm, because that's what they were raised and brought up in. They don't know nothing different than that. That's when you know you suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. When stuff like that don't, don't bother you like it's the norm, it's like, no, it's not normal. Have you ever lost a loved one to gang violence? Uh, yeah, I've lost some, yeah, hundreds of them, you know? 
and but the last, the one that hurt it the most was my uh, my twin brother. I lost um, four or five years ago. Him and my little cousin. We was at a candlelight vigil. A young man came in there and shot both of them. He shot three of them, but my my twin brother and my cousin passed away. Twin took us to the site of their killing. That's where it was at. He got killed right here. Yeah, my buddy Greg, he was he got killed right here. And we were standing over here. And my brother was over here. I guess the guy came around, what's up now? And uh did his shooting, you know, and got on. You know, that's how quick things can happen. So you were here for someone who got killed right yes. here. Yeah. Uh-huh. And while you were trying to, you know, have a vigil for that person, yes. that's where you lost your yeah. own brother. Yeah, my little cousin. My little cousin too, Joe. He got killed also. So that was a double whammy, you know? I'm glad I'm at a better place right now, you know? And probably before that happened, I was in a better place. Because, you know, if it would have happened years before then, I, I probably wouldn't be standing here. I know I wouldn't be standing here talking to you. Why? Uh, what he did, I would have did the same thing. You know, I would have kept that cycle going. That's exactly what worries the staff at Manuel Arts High School in another part of South Central. Okay. Just more recently, we've had two students this year who've died as a result of murder. And our kids struggle with that on a daily basis. The latest was a 19-year-old senior named Eric Martinez. He was shot dead in early March. And counselor Gustavo Segredo has been working double duty to help students deal with the crisis. How many of your students deal with trauma and symptoms of PTSD? Ooh, let me tell you, we did roughly um, 200 of the screeners, and I'll tell you, maybe half of them qualified. It's just sometimes, unfortunately, not all the parents or, or students are willing to go through that process in a group setting. He says simply talking about what happened is one of the best ways to treat PTSD. You're talking about students who are numb, kids who don't want to reach out. Right. So how, how do you get them to open up? How do you get them to talk to you? I, I think for me, it's, it's one of the things is being honest with the students about the impact of what they're going through. Because a lot of our students, again, for them, when they see my office and they see the psychiatric social worker, it becomes a, I can't do this. You know, I'm not crazy and I, I don't want people to think I'm crazy. Part of my role has been here on this campus is to try to help people, especially the adults, understand it's not about what's wrong with our kids, but rather what happened to them. One of the students Segredo has been trying to connect with is this 18-year-old senior, Jose Vasquez. He was best friends with Eric Martinez, the student killed in March. This happened like a few weeks ago. What happened? They ran up to him, shot him seven times in the back, shot his homie in the leg, and then shot him in the head. Jose just started meeting with the school counselor, but he says he doesn't like talking about his pain. He prefers to numb it. Why do you smoke so often? Well, I smoke because little boy, like, we're going through some problems. So smoking helps? It helps me forget about it for a minute. Okay. Do you ever have trouble sleeping or do you ever feel like you have flashbacks of violence that you've experienced or seen before? It happens once in a while, but it don't happen all the time. But you do experience flashbacks and nightmares yeah. every once in a while. What's, how does that make you feel? Like, I can't feel no type of way about it, really. Like, it happened already, so what can I do about it? It's a memory. I can't change it. it Is just, it hard to stop thinking about it sometimes? Yeah, it's always hard to stop thinking about it. You can't just see something and then forget it in an instant. What kind of violence have you seen? I've seen people get down. I've gotten down with a couple of people. I've seen people run up to each other, shoot them over stupid stuff. I've seen people shank people over because they was tagging on walls. I've seen people get thrown out their car, punched out. I've seen a lot of stuff. Have you ever seen someone get killed? I have, but a little bit, I don't want to talk about that. You don't want to talk about it? I don't want to talk about it. Why that. don't you want to talk about it? Uh, because, low of all, like, 
I just don't want to talk about that. Eric, your friend that you lost recently, he was killed. What happens now? Do you, do you know who did it? Do you know what's going to happen now? I'm not, I don't, I'm not too sure, because like I said, people is making rumors and stuff. They telling me a lot, and I just don't know who it is. What will happen when you find out who did it? I don't know. I don't know, to be honest with you. But do you think there could be more violence? Most likely, there is going to be violence. It's shocking to me when you speak to the kids in South Central LA that they have the same stories as kids in war zones. They react the same way to loud noises. They'll duck because they think it's, uh, you know, a bullet, or they'll say nothing and they'll do nothing and they'll be like, oh, well, that was a bullet. I'm so used to it, you know, I don't care. And it's unbelievable that it's happening in America because of the crime that they see on a day to day basis. There are areas where Kids, families, communities are suffering from the same effects as people who see war.